Hello semiconductor students. This mini demo video describes a full bridge rectifier using first the TINA TI simulator and then second comparing the results of the simulator to a real circuit built with similar parts and uh, signal collected with a USB oscilloscope and function generator, the Picoscope 2204A. So we're going to start with our TINA circuit and as you can see, we are applying a voltage source directly to the bridge. So uh, this is Tina's generalized voltage source. And if we click on properties, we can see that we are using a sine wave. We can take a look at that. We've selected sine wave. We could have selected anything else. Wouldn't have worked quite as well. We need a sine wave for our rectification. We are using one kilohertz frequency. We've picked that because the transformer that we're using to supply our signal on our protoboard, the, the real circuit, works best with a little bit higher frequency than we would normally use to say rectify wall power at, at 50 or 60 hertz. We needed a little bit more uh, inductive reactance. So we're matching all the parameters for the components and the input signal on our model so we can do a one-to-one -one comparison with what we built on our protoboard. Likewise, we're applying uh, just shy of one volt amplitude, and that is what we get uh, as the output of our secondary with our transformer on our protoboard, uh, accounting for the sag that we get uh, when we input our, our arbitrary waveform generator signal. So in this sense, what we're doing is we're, we're replicating with our voltage source on TINA uh, what we're going to get out of our transformer secondary on our protoboard. We're using uh, signal diodes. Uh, these are, we could have used rectifying diodes. Uh, you can see TINA's got a quite a, an assortment of diodes that we could have chosen, each with different properties. Uh, the 1N4148 is a very typical general signal diode. It's low power, and so it's going to give more of its characteristic properties with the low currents that, that we can supply uh, with our USB uh, function generator, the AWG from the Picascope. And most importantly, we've placed our ground on the DC side of our circuit such that we aren't cutting out um, any portion of our AC signal. It's very important not to be applying the ground um, up here to the AC side when we're putting in our, our, our voltage source directly. This is very important when we build a circuit on our protoboard. If we were, for instance, to use our AWG to supply our bridge directly, uh, we could not use the same uh, ground for our oscilloscope measurement to, to, make, uh, to measure across our load resistor because we would effectively end up shorting out half of our diodes. So we would end up getting um, a half wave output rather than a full wave, which is of course what we want from our bridge. Uh, again, load resistor is matching what we have on our, on our protoboard. This could be anything um, in our simulator, it could be anything in our real circuit. Generally speaking, the thing to remember is the lower the load resistor, the more current the bridge is going to draw, and the more we're going to be uh, in the, the higher current end of our diode behavior. And of course, we've got to make sure that our, um, our AC signal can supply all the power that we're drawing. Otherwise, we'll, we'll sag it or draw it down. Otherwise, not get the voltage signal we would expect. So we have one uh, voltage measurement point here. This, this little half moon is, a, is part of our, our meter selections. It's a, a voltage pin. And it basically says here, collect the voltage at this node in the circuit. So when we, when we run our transient analysis over a couple of uh, periods of our sinusoidal waveform, we're going to be measuring the source voltage and displaying it. And then we're going to be measuring what's essentially the voltage drop over this resistor and that drop being relative to where we put our ground. So we're just going to basically get V load. So we go up to analysis, hit transient. We're going to collect over two milliseconds. That's, that's two periods with our 1K, um, one kilohertz input frequency. We hit OK. And here we go. 
with our results. So uh, the green signal is our waveform representing the source. And so as you can see, we've got an amplitude of uh, 975 millivolts, which is what we asked for, just a little bit less than a volt. And our red signal, we'll go ahead and display the legend, everybody, which is, which is now showing the, the, the position at the time I selected the legend of my, um, of my cursor. We'll go ahead and run that again. If you already have a cursor down to measure your position on a curve and then you hit legend, it will actually display the position that your cursor was in. So it's a little distracting. So let's display the legend first. So we have red is the voltage drop over our load and the green is our, is our input voltage to the bridge. So the first thing we can note is we don't have half wave, we do have full wave rectification. You can see our, our negative going Half of the waveform um, has been rectified and is being displayed, but we, we've got some gaps here, and that's due to the fact that we do have uh, some amount of voltage drop over our diodes. So that, those are nominally, they're silicon diodes, so uh, a first approximation is 0.7 volts. Uh, our TINA modeling software actually will model this with, with the exponential uh, current voltage relationship that we all know diodes, uh, diodes have. So uh, depending on the size of your load resistor and how much current your bridge draws, uh, you'll get a different voltage drop over your diodes. And of course, um, given the fact that we are measuring V load uh, just over this resistor, and comparing it to V source, we have our, our 975 nominal volts coming out of our source, and then we're going to drop voltage over one diode, and then we'll go into our, our V load. So V load to ground uh, is differing from V source by only a single, the voltage drop over a single diode. Given where the ground reference is, this return point that we'll have dropped over D3 would actually be below ground, just from the standpoint of the ground reference. So let's go ahead and, and put a couple of uh, marks so we can compare our peak output. So we are looking at uh, looking at the y, um, y value here. I'll highlight that with my cursor. You can see it in blue. So we have about 238 millivolts. Uh, we would get as a, as a peak voltage over our load. It is not quite sinusoidal. We've kind of lopped the tops off. Again, that's because we were seeing the effect of the diode cutoff. Were this true sinusoidal, we could, we could get an RMS value to compare to uh, by doing our 0 0.707 volt multiplier of the amplitude. That wouldn't really be true in this case because we don't have quite a sinusoidal signal, but it's close. So if we were to measure this with a, with a typical true RMS multimeter, um, we could do something, something around 0 0.707 times this 238, and we should match what we get on the meter. But typically, if we're looking at a signal, uh, we'll want to use our oscilloscope. And so uh, we, can, uh, we can use the measurement functions on, on an oscilloscope to, to get RMS as well. So. Uh, Next question is, uh, how did this compare to what we measured on our, on our picoscope with, a, with a, real, um, a real circuit that we built? So let's go ahead and look at our saved, our saved file. I'm not gonna run it live here. I'm just gonna pull up my saved printout with the picoscope software, which is the software that I'm using you can go ahead and actually do a screen print to a PDF of a signal that you're interested in and save it. You don't have to build the circuit and run it again. But taking a look at this signal, our, uh, our blue larger amplitude signal is, uh, is actually the input to the transformer. It is a one-to-one -one isolation transformer. So, uh, and is the same on both sides. So we are presumably getting the same voltage output on the secondary, or at least very close. And the, the measured value you can see down here, I'm kind of hovering around it in the lower, the lower right-hand side of the screen. Channel A is the blue large channel, which is the, the uh, transformer input. 
we have 927. Okay, that was inverted a little, so a little over 900. Not quite an exact match for our Tina. We could, we could actually go back and correct that if we really wanted to here. A little dyslexia there. We can do 927 to do an exact match. Okay, okay, we can rerun this so we can compare our, our outputs. So now we have 927 on our simulated uh, input to the bridge and we're getting 203 on our simulated output. So how did that compare to our, uh, to our measurement? So our, our channel B, our red channel, is the output of the bridge and it's a drop over a 6, 56K resistor. So you can see we have the same kind of full rectification form. We have a little bit of noise and we do have a bit of a DC offset uh, going in different directions. So depending on, on which way our, our primary was going, we were getting either a bit of a, a DC add, addition or subtraction. Um, I set the cursor to, to represent the, the topmost peak and got 241. Um, that's a little bit high compared to the simulator. Had I picked the lower peak, I would have been closer. But within the error of both, uh, both the components that I use to build my circuit on my protoboard, the errors in measurement, and the non-idealities that are not accounted for in the simulator, this is not a bad match uh, of the built circuit. So we've replicated the full wave, wave, wave form. We're seeing, uh, you know, Obviously, we're getting full wave rectification. We're seeing the truncation effect, these flat spots, uh, where we're seeing the effect of the diode cutoffs, and amplitude match of input to output is, is a reasonable match. There's definitely some error there, but it is not a bad match. So this concludes a demo video of a full bridge rectifier using signal diodes and in the case of the built circuit using a, a small protoboard one-to-one uh, -one isolation transformer as a power source and of course the arbitrary waveform generator of the picoscope powering that and um, and taking measurements in appropriate places to avoid uh, uh, to avoid shorting of our diodes and I guess just as a as a last parting thought we can take a look and see what would the effect be if we put another ground up here. And this is, this is an experiment on the fly. We're going to try putting a ground on our, our AC side. Uh, the sort of the classic mistake that we can make if we, were, we are powering our bridge rectifier directly with a function generator. So in this case, we would expect on a forward going signal, we would expect current to flow out of our AC source, it would travel through this diode, it would travel through the load, it would go through this diode into ground, uh, but when we had a negative going signal, it would go uh, basically negative to ground and um, we wouldn't necessarily get that part of the waveform. So we'll go ahead and run that with the additional ground, the erroneous ground, and voila, half wave rectification rather than full wave. So this additional ground basically shorts out part of the bridge. Another way you can think about it is, is pretend that you have a, a, a minus sign up here um, and the current would want to flow backwards through the diode. So if you could imagine the, the negative going current would flow backwards and you know, to ground, and you would get a return uh, coming the other way, but we wouldn't get the, the full signal over the, over the um, load resistor. So mangled that a bit in the description, but definitely showed it clearly on the results of the simulation. And this is one reason we use an isolation transformer uh, quite often as the supply to a bridge on a test circuit, not necessarily because we need to boost our voltage or adjust our voltage, uh, but to allow us to use the same instrument to do our measurements, our scope measurements, or frequency measurements, and also power our bridge. So unfortunately, if we're using um, a function generator to power our bridge directly, 
the presence of these two grounds, which is inherent in a, especially a wall-powered, uh, you know, an AC-powered instrument or a USB instrument that's grounded through our computer. Uh, both our function generator and our measurement um, ports are common. They're all grounded together. So by using the isolation transformer, we get rid of that ground effectively and we give ourselves our other set of diodes and we can rectify the full wave. So that is it for this uh, quick demo and I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, Adventures in Full Bridge Rectification.